This is the central bank? This is the central bank. This is the central bank. Why is it look like this? I don't know. They are working on, on putting it better, but uh, the US dollar reserves are really low right now. Gas prices, groceries, paying rent, it's felt a bit harder lately around the world. Inflation was 7.5% last year in the US, the highest in 40 years. But I've come to Argentina where inflation was more than 50% last year. Inflation started because the government just keeps printing money. When you go to the supermarket, you cannot know how much you're gonna spend. And it's expected to be 50% again this year, again. We don't know what's, what's going to happen like tomorrow. So how do people live knowing the value of their currency is going down rapidly? We live in the present and we, we do what, what we can to like survive, you know? <laughs> the value of the pesos is uh, so like bad. <laughs> She's not exaggerating. It's lost 99% of its value over the years. Things have gotten so crazy here that there is now multiple exchange rates. You have the official rate, and then you have what's called the blue market exchange rate. Let me explain. This chicken sandwich and lemonade cost me about 1,000 Argentinian pesos. If I were to put that on my credit card, that would cost me 23 US dollars. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pay in cash. And at the blue market exchange rate, which I got, which is about 210 for every US dollar, this lunch cost me less than $5. The currency here loses its value so often that the government has taken away 13 zeros over the past 40 years. And with such crazy inflation, a lot of these smaller banknotes don't mean much at all. So 100 Argentinian pesos is now equal to 50 cents. 20 would be 10 cents, and these coins hardly mean anything at all, which means spending money in Argentina can become a hassle. But 100 Argentinian pesos used to be worth $100 back in the 90s. So how did we get here? So you don't know um, how much of the cost of something is. You don't know whether it's something it's expensive or is it cheap, because in one place it would cost 20 more pesos and the other place we wrote like 20 less pesos. Nearly everyone here I talk to says that when they get paid, they immediately buy everything they need. The, the money starts losing the, the power. So if I, when I get my salary, I could buy 10 packs of milk. By the end of the week, I would be able to buy only six. Uh, most people try to buy things from the grocery store as soon as possible because the prices are gonna go up within that month. That's a way uh, to make it up with inflation. So inflation doesn't get you. And if they have any money left over? The rest of it, people would go and buy US dollars or nowadays cryptocurrency is very, it's very popular in Buenos Aires. But more about crypto later. So apparently what happens here is that when the currency you're getting paid in is inflating 60% a year, what's the first thing you do? You take that money and you convert it to a more stable currency, like the US dollar. So a lot of people, the first thing they do when they get paid, they will go to a grocery store, buy as many groceries as they can for the month because chances are those prices will go up the next month, any extra money they have left, they're gonna try and convert those to US dollar. Having US dollar is hugely popular in Argentina as a form of savings. They don't spend it, they just save it. And they literally take $100 bills, put it under their mattress, and save it. Because so many people here are stashing US dollars under their mattress, it's believed that this country has one of the highest amounts of $100 bills outside of the US. So Argentina's government says the US dollar is equal to one thing, but the market says it's equal to a lot more. But in an effort to keep its power and ensure its people will continue using its own currency, the government here says that private citizens can only buy $200 in foreign currency on the official exchange market every month, and they must pay a steep tax. So that's probably why you see a lot of people selling dollars on the streets. And the government here even does raids to crack down on government exchanges happening. But to fully understand this myself, I head to a jewelry shop in Buenos Aires, and the reason I'm exchanging money in the back of a jewelry store might be because in this country, it's illegal to publicly advertise currency exchanges exchange services. What's the best rate you can give? I have only one rate. It's two, 211. Well, began, they began in the suit. <laughs> one year ago? Yes. How much, what was the rate you would offer for $100? I don't know, but I think that uh, 80 pesos, 80 pesos, I think that was uh, four, four times less. Wow. Do you think that they're going to cut the one, the zeros again soon? That's 
the bus a lot of years. And if in years, maybe yes. they will. No, not, not now. This is the biggest banknote in Argentina, which is about $5. Tomorrow, this could be $3. Yes, of course. Conflation is so high because the government keeps printing money. But if that's the problem, why doesn't the government just print less money? Well, it's not that easy. See, if you live here, you get free healthcare, free university, even insanely low electricity prices. Like $3 for your bill each month. That's because the government is subsidizing or even paying for a lot of these things. And no politician wants to be the one to cut some of these things off. In a perfect world, it's, it's a very beautiful idea that everything is for free. Of course, health and education first. It's wonderful. And that's why you need 60% inflation to finance all these subsidies and all, all, all this welfare. Part of the Argentinian culture just got used to um, inflation. It's very sad to say that, but Argentinians got used to live like, like this. Argentina spend more money all the time, and we don't produce more. But some people I speak with say the reason for inflation isn't just about these government services, it's also because of corruption. Inflation also comes because they spent, they say, they would say they spent the pavement of a, of, a, of a highway road and they just keep it in their pocket. All of this is causing insane instability of its currency and people's salaries. The monthly income for an Argentina today is around 200, 250 US dollars. It gets uh, less and less uh, through the years. And of course, um, food and things get expensive, uh, mostly weekly or monthly, and your salary gets behind. And some Argentinians have seen it all. One month, all the salary I earned was $15. And I would pay my rent $5 for a small apartment. So everything was destroyed. It was around 25K thousand dollars so it was a lot of money and then like instantly in one minute my savings account was confiscated years later my retirement account also was confiscated in 2001 and 2008 the imf or international monetary fund has bailed out argentina 22 times the country hasn't been able to pay back its debt and owes billions of dollars in fact argentina owes more than any other country to the imf when, when the uh, imf gives us money they are like putting a debt on the shoulders of generations to come, and that's robbing. They shouldn't do that. That girl will owe, will owe some other people a lot of money, and she didn't ask for that. It absolutely amazes me that despite such a crazy economic situation, such crazy consecutive inflation, that Buenos Aires feels very, very rich. I mean, you see HSBC Bank, you see some of the biggest banks in the world that have huge towers here. Everything is clean, safe. I mean, this is really one of the most cleanest and what appears from the outside to, to be wealthiest cities I've seen in the Americas. In many places I visit, there are insanely beautiful parks, beautiful architecture, and an overall feeling that life is good. But what I'm seeing does not tell the full story. I know there are a lot of people who are making a lot of efforts to get to the end of the month and they're having diets like a lot of um, flour and pasta and rice very little uh, food very, very little beef uh, it's frustrated yes uh, because uh, i see the poverty growing when i was a kid poverty was uh, seven percent today the poverty is around 40 45 percent if you compare different cities around argentina it's like you have this part where most people is really extremely poor, even poorer than some countries in the, you know, in Africa. Many of its young people are leaving or trying to leave. You can make a plan for the future. You can basically plan it all. Let's say you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car. It's hard for the local people, I would say. I don't really like talking like this about my country. I don't really see myself living here because of the economy, no? My goal is to live in United States. Argentina is now seeing more advertisements and more adoption of cryptocurrencies. If you talk with someone younger, they are more into Bitcoin. I learned about Bitcoin a long time ago from my son. They are trying to do something to play with Bitcoins or cryptocurrency in some ways. But if you talk with someone in their 30s or 40s, they are thinking just about dollars. He was playing games, uh, I don't know what, and he showed me the white paper. 
and I was like, oh my God, this is freedom. The more restrictions and capital controls you have, the more Bitcoin you need. And I think that we will be able to keep that wealth that we produce here in Argentina that would be very, very important and not let the government like waste it and things. The government uh, doesn't have a clue how Bitcoin works in another world. So what is the solution here? Don't spend more than you make. It's the same personal, a company or a country. You don't need to be a great economist to know that. It's more simple than the people say. I, I always say this should end, but then you look at Venezuela, and Venezuela maybe 20 years of uh, a lot more inflation. You never know how this will stop or how or when. We're going to have inflation for a long, long time. Could it get worse? Yes, of course, always. So, can it get better? A lot of people, in, since two years ago, a lot of young people are going to Europe or the States to, in search of a better economic situation and future. Probably would get worse, because um, the government, you know, they, they don't learn the lesson, what's right to do. They just keep doing the same thing. So, if we're going to do the same things and have the same problems, what would you expect to a solution to that, you know? Because of the economic situation, both her daughter and her son, who were in their 20s, moved abroad. That made me very, very sad. Uh, I had, it's like, oh, I lost my children, I lost my children. I mourned. I really, like, decided that I'm going to work very hard, as hard as I can as a citizen, to make me, my country a better place. So the one who's 14 now doesn't want to leave or be forced to leave when he's 24. But despite her goal, even she doesn't know what's next. I cannot tell if we're gonna make it, but if we make it, we are gonna be very, very well or very, very bad. But Argentina's been like this for a long time. And if there's one thing I've learned being here, it's that people are expecting uncertainty. They've just become used to it, they've adapted. So it kind of makes me wonder, can Argentina ever break this cycle?